In the northwest of the country lies a vast stretch of flat green land, Mazuri. Apart from the thousands of lakes, there's practically nothing to interrupt the plain. Many consider it the most beautiful part of Poland. It's surely one of the most rural. Three quarters of Poland lies in the vast European plain that stretches from the southwest of France all the way to Russia. In Missouri, we run into the ordinary barnyard animals that gaze at the passing trains, and other species that come and visit the region during the summer months, such as the stork. This migrating wader is a welcome guest. The inhabitants even provide special poles to encourage nesting. For Barbara Dochwa-Wolska, the storks are almost part of the family. The storks arrive very early in the springtime, the end of March, beginning of April. And that's how it is every year. There's never a year they don't come. The male arrives first and prepares the nest. A few days later, the female arrives. In Missouri, the white stork is part of the landscape. In the Middle Ages, a vast forest covered the region. It was home to the European bison, among other animals. The European bison, one of the largest land mammals on the continent, is a cousin of the American bison. They nearly vanished on account of deforestation. Here, the Boretskai forest is a favorable habitat for the bison. Christoph Zoch is a park ranger here. In Poland, there are about 1,000 bison. And here in the Boretskai forest, 300, of which 80 roam freely. There are three in this pen. Up until the First World War, bison could be found living in several regions in Poland. During the war, there was a severe drop in the bison population, and then their numbers increased once the war ended. The many lakes of Missouri are the traces of glacial erosion. The migrating glacier carved out hollows that then filled up with water. The region counts 4,000 lakes. Some of them are linked by canals. On the Elblag Canal, the difference in water levels is too great for normal locks, so they came up with an original solution. Like a water mill, hydraulic wheels supply the energy needed to pull the boat out of the water and haul it up the slope. The boat is cradled on a wide carriage on rails. This ingenious system was invented in the early 19th century. Here, on land that was long fought over by Prussia and Poland, stands the Malbork Castle, an impressive brick fortress built in the 13th century. It is the largest medieval construction of this type in all of Europe. The whole complex is in fact made up of three castles nested in one another. Malbork was used as headquarters for the famous Teutonic Knights when they returned from the Crusades in the Holy Land. In the 14th century, the fearsome soldier monks ruled over a large part of the north of present-day Poland. One century later, the Kingdom of Poland had to step in to put an end to the domination of the famous Maltese Cross.
Heading for the coast, the leafy trees give way to conifers, a sign that the soil is becoming more acid. And then suddenly, there's sand. It almost completely covers these trees that it has killed. Huge, shifting dunes up to 40 meters in height are found throughout the Slavinsky National Park. These dunes, pushed by the wind, can move up to 10 meters a year. The dunes shift so much that in the 16th century, the neighboring town of Leba was engulfed by sand. The inhabitants had to move and build a new community that is now a small fishing town. On the coast of the Baltic Sea, Sopot is Poland's summer capital. This town, with its many cultural events, is a favorite vacation spot. These pompous buildings that have been dozing since they were built at the beginning of the 20th century must have been quite startled by the work of the architect Zaleski, who designed the Crooked House in 2003. It looks like it's straight, so to speak, out of a Walt Disney cartoon. It is Poland's most photographed house. The seaside resort of Sopot is quite close to the large port of Gdansk, Poland's main port and one of the most active on the Baltic Sea. The port of Gdansk has existed for over a thousand years. Thanks to the port, the city has enjoyed complementary names down through the centuries. Gdansk has been called Poland's Golden Gate and even the Pearl of the Baltic. In the middle of the 14th century, Gdansk was a member of a commercial association, the Hanseatic League. It was first composed of German cities, then it expanded to include Northern Europe and finally all of Europe. The member cities of the Hanseatic League enjoyed immense prosperity. Richly decorated gates announced the affluence of the town. The Hanseatic cities often adopted the same style of architecture. The influence of Flemish architecture is quite evident here in these townhouses with their ornate facades. The discovery of America modified the major trade routes and sounded the death knell of the Hanseatic League. The power and independence of the Hanseatic League eventually gave rise to a good deal of envy, even among the League's own trading ports. The League was disbanded in the 17th century, and as a result, Gdansk suffered economically. Amber was used as a currency for trading in Gdansk. And it was a very old currency, for the amber route from the Baltic to the Mediterranean dates back to remote ancient times. Amber is the fossilized resin of conifers. 
Amber is mysteriously washed up on the shores of the Baltic Sea, also known as the Amber Coast. The resin came from a vast forest of conifers that was covered by the sea. The crafting of amber, glass and silver is a tradition here in the cities on the Baltic. Lech Przyszek. We finish up by polishing the stone, which gives it its final shape. The next step is placing it into the silver or gold setting, and depending on the shape we got after polishing, we decide whether we'll use it to make a pendant, a ring or a bracelet. This one here will be a pendant. The ancient Greeks discovered that rubbing amber with cloth would charge it with static electricity. They called it electron, meaning made by the sun, the sun being the most powerful source of energy. Amber varies in color from yellow to brown. It's more or less translucent, depending on the amount of air trapped inside. 